Now let's figure the answer for negative 3. So for negative 3, we would have y is equal to negative 3 squared minus 5 over negative 3 squared plus 1. Well, negative 3 squared is 9, so I have 9 minus 5 over negative 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 1. 9 minus 5 is 4, 9 plus 1 is 10, 4 tenths reduces to 2 fifths. So for x equal negative 3, I get the algebraic fraction is 2 fifths. Now since if I put in a 3 and square a 3, I'd get exactly the same 9 that I did when I squared negative 3. I know that the algebraic fraction evaluated at 3 is also 2 fifths. Now let's evaluate the algebraic fraction at negative 2. So we have a negative 2 squared minus 5 over a negative 2 squared plus 1. That would be 4 because the negative 2 squared is positive 4 minus 5 over 4 plus 1 which is a negative 1 fifth. We would get exactly the same answer for positive 2 because if you replace x by positive 2 you end up with the same here because once you square positive 2 you'll get 4. So the answer here is also a negative one-fifth. Now let's evaluate for negative one. So we have a negative one squared minus five over a negative one squared plus one. That's one minus five over one plus one, which is a negative four over two, which is negative 2. We'll get the same answer for positive 1, so that would also be a negative 2. Now what I can do is, I can plot the points. So let me bring the graph over, and Let's plot the points. If x is negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, y is 11 seventeenths. So I'm just going to guess kind of where 11 seventeenths would be, somewhere along here. If x is negative 3, y is 2 fifths, which is somewhere along there. If x is a negative 2, y is a negative one-fifth. If x is a negative one, y is a negative two. If x is zero, y is negative five. If x is one, y is negative two. If x is two, y is a negative one-fifth. If x is three, y is 2 fifths, and if x is 4, y is 11 seventeenths. Now what we want to do is kind of draw in the curve. Or what we think the curve will look like, just kind of draw it smooth. And I get something looking like this. Let's go ahead and verify our answer with a graphing calculator. So let's graph a of x is equal to x squared minus 5 over x squared plus 1 using the graphing calculator. If you do not have a graphing calculator with you, go ahead and stop the tape now and go and get one. I know from the last tape 
that you will not be able to read the screen very plain on the calculator. So you probably need one beside you so you can see it better. But I have the calculator and I have turned it on. Now what I want to do is to check the mode. Right here is your mode and make sure that everything down the left side is highlighted. Now let's check the window. We want the window to be the same as the window on the graph that I've just graphed here. And let's look at the window here. X runs from here to here. So what if this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, negative 10, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So X runs from negative 10 to 10. I'm not going to count it, but I'll tell you that Y also runs from negative 10 to 10. And the scale for each of them is 1. 1, 2, 3, and so forth. So let's set our calculator the same way. We have X minimum is negative 10, X maximum is 10, X scale is 1, Y minimum is negative 10, Y max is 10, and Y scale is 1. Now I want to hit the Y equals button and put in my function. The function is X squared minus 5 divided by X squared plus 1. Now to put that in, in the calculator, you want to put in parentheses hit your X button, come down and hit the X square button down here. So that would be X squared minus 5 parentheses divided by the parentheses X squared plus 1, close parentheses, and then hit enter. Now I'll pull it down and show you the way that looks. You have x squared minus 5 divided by x squared plus 1. And notice you had to have the parentheses. Now let's hit the graph. That looks almost the same as our graph. So you can, you can see that one. Here's the one we have done, which verifies that we probably did it basically correctly. This completes tape 113.